difference maker. The party has been a lot more fun since Sharif Cooper has been in uniform for the Tigers. You know, Tom, it's like working with you. It's a really good point guard. Just makes you better, makes your job easier, and that's what Cooper does. Hooks up his teammates, can score on his own, but almost nine assists a game. When he's in the game, the offense flows better. It all flows through him primarily, but everybody's comfortable, and he finds guys when and where they want the ball. Just makes it easier. And like Cooper, I like to throw lobs from the left side. Auburn has the tip. There will be no postseason for Bruce Pearl's team, so this closing schedule is their postseason. He wants his team to prove that they have a postseason resume. They've won 12 of the last 18 since LSU, since 2009. And the building's got some sort of energy in it today with folks expecting a high level of offense. Here's Alan Flanagan. He'll launch from three, and we are right on cue to start things off. And then an LSU turnover. Darius Days turned it, turned, trying to find Wofford and threw it out of bounds. Will Wade does not want the ball there. That's not his spot. <laughs> he was open, though. He was wide, wide open. Wide open. Interesting first possession for Auburn. They didn't move the ball at all from side to side. They switched screens as LSU will always do. They'll switch ball screen action. Great cut right in the face of Cam Thomas. You can't have that. Flanagan hits a three early, but there, that's just a guy making a cut right in front of your face. you got to stand him up, chest him. You can't allow it to happen. Meanwhile, on the other side for LSU, Cameron Thomas, the fourth leading scorer in the country, but he's far from their only offensive weapon. Here's Rockford over Thor. Rebounded by the freshman, JT Thor. This is the key to the game right here. Transition defense. It leveled out Cooper a little bit, but it took two guys to do it. Got a wide open three. That's pretty good. That's what I, how Auburn wants to play. LSU's got to corral the ball earlier, make it hard for Cooper. It hangs. When's the last time you saw that? Just hanging out. That's like a once a year type thing. I don't know if that's a good omen or bad. Meanwhile, on the other side, Darius Days didn't make it back down the floor after the defensive possession. Watch number four, White, starting at the elbow, and he's already limping before that ball is shot. And he'll go to the end of the bench and get some attention from athletic trainer Sean Eddy. Point blank look, and Watford blew the bunny. It'll go out of bounds and stay with LSU. You don't want to see that from Days because he is one of the few experienced guys along with Javante Smart inbound of the ball here that's, that's logged some minutes and played in some big games for LSU. Uh, Non-contact injury looked like he's already off the side. We'll monitor that. Cam Thomas hits his first attempt. 30% from three on the season. Then it was his 147 three-point attempt. Capable of making threes, but he's best when he's playing through contact, getting to the rim. Gets to the free throw line, top five in the nation in terms of free throw attempts, the most free throws made. But again, this is their issue defensively. That's just, again, a flash, a cut, slip screen right down the lane, pass, too easy to deliver it, too easy to finish it, no weak, weak side rotation. It's been LSU's issue all year. LSU averaging 82 points a game, coming off of an impressive defensive performance against Tennessee. They won by 13 on Saturday. Neither one of these teams played midweek. Not because of COVID, but because of the winter weather that ran through the southern part of the United States, Texas and Mississippi to be specifically. To be specific, I'm frozen here in my basement. We got a foul inside on the feed to Watford. It's obvious that Will Wade wants to get the ball into the hands of Trenton Watford here early. Yeah, good flash by Watford there, but you see the issue defensively in terms of where they rank in the SEC, points per game, blocks per game, steals per game. Those are some of the issues they have but again transition defense has been their big one one of their biggest problems and then their big their second biggest problem has been their inability to clean up the glass at times and that's going to prove to be a big piece of this game because Auburn's great on the offensive boards they're great crashing the glass Auburn is and at times LSU for lack of a better term can seem a little disinterested in wanting to have that battle in that fight on the uh, on the defensive glass Sophomore Watford knocks them both down. Auburn's gotten off to a hot start in this game. They've made three of four from the floor. And there's those rebounding numbers too. Offensive rebounding rate, top 30 in the nation for Auburn. Bottom 50 in the nation in terms of defensive rebounding rate. But they're just getting, they're getting good looks right now. That was Devin Cambridge from the corner. He had a monster game against LSU last time these teams met. He had seven of 10 from deep.
Thomas falling away. He is not shy. He will get his shots. Where is Cooper at his best in the half court? When he's operating, when he comes off these ball screens right here, he can go left and right very well with both hands. Hardwell, good roll. When he's dictating, he can go both ways, both directions. A lot of times, he doesn't need much of a window. How he delivers balls at times is, un is unorthodox, is unique. How he can get passes off to guys, and his vision is outstanding. Um, you've got to always be ready. Hands ready to make a play, because he's going to throw some balls at you. You may not expect coming at you. He needs to get a scoring average up just a tick to be on pace once again to average 20 points, eight assists, and five boards. LSU throws in a three. If Sharif Cooper does that, as Javante Smart gets his first bucket, he would be the only player since 2010 in college basketball next to John Morant to have a 28 and five season. Mm. Uh, that's saying something. We know how ja, how great he was in college, and then obviously where he's been at the NBA level. But this is different too, because Cooper's sub six feet. I mean, Ja was long, athletic, six five, six six, could jump and dunk on you. It's a he's a different type of guy. How he has to create, but still does all these amazing things. All right, now hold on a second. I won't let you besmirch Sharif Cooper's height. He is listed at six one. That is the, that Sorry. is what he is listed, listed at. Listed. My bad. Listed at six one, about one one sixty. 170, I think he's listed at 180, but you know, whatever it, you want to say what it is listed. This man does some amazing stuff given he doesn't have maybe the physical God-given abilities that one John Morant or others we've seen in the college basketball world. Top prospects as Javante Smart knocks down a couple threes. We've got a one-point game. Auburn four or five to start this game from the floor. Nice use of besmirch though. Well done. Mm -hmm. Here's Thor. JT Thor had a big shooting night in Auburn's game at Kentucky on Saturday. Hit five of six from three. Thomas, turn around. Got it! Missed the first one from the left side. Drills the second attempt. Same shot from the right. Faded away there. When you hit, he had Cooper on him, at times they're going to want to go at Cooper. They're going to want to post up Cooper and try to make him work on the defensive end. But again, Cam can score in different ways and different finishes. Floaters around the rim, fade away. Sometimes off the incorrect foot. Just a naturally gifted scorer. Thomas with the rebound. Freshman out of Chesapeake, Virginia. Out of Oak Hill, and he'll go to the line of the three-point chance. Foul on Cambridge is his second. We talk about Auburn. They're not transition. LSU's got to have transition defense. Same thing the other way. Cam Thomas had a steam. 6-6-2-10 right through Cambridge. And one. Liberty Mutual customized my car insurance, so I only pay for what I need. What a great day. Ahmoud Abdul Roof only lasted two years at LSU. He would have had Pistol Peach record in his sights. Which is bananas, because I mean... It is with, crazy. I, I laugh at Pistol Pete's numbers. They, they, it's, it's almost comical to think how ridiculous that is. Um, but Cam Thomas willing, I mean, rightfully is mentioned in the same breath in our modern context of what he's doing as a freshman it, is outstanding. And, 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 it's been fun to watch all year. Pistol Pete averaged 52 points a game in his first two games against Auburn. Both of them sellouts, both home and on the road. He would later break Oscar Robertson's all-time NCAA scoring record. And he did with plenty of time to spare. Watford with the rebound. It's a good duck-in by Moore on Thomas. Again, Thomas at times will be disinterested defensively. Good duck-in, but he didn't take his time to finish. And a big offensive rebound on the other side. LSU has really turned the screws recently in the last couple of possessions in this game. Getting shots they want, playing out in transition, and scoring quite easily. That was Josh LeBlanc on that end for LSU. In the paint. And it will fall off and put back there for Babatunde Akingbola. His first bucket. That ends a 13-0 LSU run. Here's Thomas going baseline. And off the window. 10 early for Cameron Thomas. How's it over under looking down? And I think we're on a pretty good pace. Yeah, the over under folks got up to 166. It was 164 and a half. For those novice in this world, in the, in the betting world, it's the total score at the end of the game. Are you betting over? Are you betting under? Well, guys in Vegas got about 166 points at the end of the day here, right before he tipped off, which is the highest number we've seen in major college basketball this year. And uh, we are on pace to shatter that. Offensive rebound miss tipped up and in who do you want to give it to maybe then Akinbola who mistakenly tipped it in 
we talked about Auburn, how they're going to crash the offensive glass. Now, they have been impactful all year doing that. But LSU's flipped the script here right now. They've got five-second chance points. They've been active, engaged. And Auburn's not been willing to meet the match physically. They bring a double to the post, dribbled out of there, and that will leave an opportunity for a drive. And he uses every bit of the rim for Allen Flanagan, who's got five for Auburn. Jalen Williams is a talented player for Auburn, but I, I don't think you need to double him 15 feet from the hoop there. When you do that, they force a rotation that wasn't necessary in allowing an easy drive to the basket and finish, which sometimes LSU does. They will run and double the ball, and if you just make the right play, somebody's going to be open. That spacing there, Watford off the side of the backboard. The defense by Chris Moore. Auburn started hot. Tigers have cooled down a bit. Here's Jamal Johnson. Rebounded by Smart. Into the paint. Got it. LSU is fantastic in the paint. Non post ups. They score 1.2 points per possession when they do that. They've got a lot of different guys who can get it to the rim and get it in. It's I'm hungry. Try the new Detroit style today. No one out pizzas the hut. UB understands how to play together. And the question is, will the real new team stand up? Duke and Virginia, this is great. It's a sonic blockbuster tonight. Virginia and Duke and the ACC. Duke coming off of a 24-point win against Wake Forest. Matthew Hurt was... Sensational. He's been hot lately. He's made 16 of his last 19 from the floor. Here's Javante Smart. Offensive board and a putback for Andre Hyatt, who's made a third consecutive start today, and he's been productive for Will Wade's squad. I mean, they're, they're crushing them on the glass right now. They're getting shots they want right before the break. Javante Smart Smart's able to get into the lane and shoot a just wide open runner, which is like a layup for him. And when they're not making shots, they're crushing them on the glass. Auburn has to be, this is a young team, youngest team in the nation. They have to be willing to have this fight on the road. And right now, LSU started slow, but they're dominating as we speak. Five star for Sharif Cooper hasn't attempted a shot yet. They trail by 12. Five hour energy helps you get stuff done. And now on the LSU end from an offensive standpoint, is it not? 100%. Sometimes when your expectations are really high for these games with high-flying offensive teams, they don't meet them. Right now, LSU is exceeding them. I mean, Cam Thomas is getting any shot he wants right now. Javante Smart, we talk about Thomas a lot, but Smart was one of those elite guys that played on that team that went to the Sweet 16 the last time we had an NCAA tournament two years ago. As the junior kind of elder statesman, you know, his ability to get in the lane and use his body and be smart and be kind of clinical, not being like an explosive athlete or anything, is outstanding, and he's help them uh, build a nice double-digit cushion. Auburn started this game four for five. They've made just two of their last nine now. Here's well, the first foul by Thor. Part of the problem is, you know, your offense is connected. Your defense is connected to your offense. So just like we saw when LSU beat Tennessee this past weekend and quite handily, they scored the ball easily. They almost shot 60% in the second half. That allowed them to get back and set their defense and take away one of their biggest weaknesses, which is defensive transition. Same thing here. So as they're scoring, they're able to get back and get set, and they're much better defensively when they are set. But when they're in transition and they're trying to offensive rebound out of that in particular defensive rebound, they have, they have been susceptible all year long. So this their offense is really helping them defensively right now. Thor got a piece of that one from Wilkinson. Still nothing from Sharif Cooper. His only... That was blocked by Milwaukee Wilkinson. His only number in the stack column is... Well, nothing. He don't have anything yet. And that one thrown away. Eric Gaines didn't see anybody. Uh, don't leave your feet and make a pass. Uh, on the other end, though, Alan Flanagan trying to go to the lane. Fantastic block, block by Thomas or Wilkinson. I don't know who got it. Sharif Cooper, no points, no assists. I want to see him get in more screening action. If they're going to switch him, get see certain switches, and they've got to be able to take advantage of different mismatches when they get him. And that's what Bruce Pearl talked to us a lot about yesterday is when they're going to switch, and they're not used to seeing that in the half court, switch everything. Do we recognize it? Can we identify a mismatch and we take advantage of it? Sharif there, fortunate. I thought he might have gotten away with a I don't know, travel there. I don't know if there was any contact with the ball, but he gets a layup. 
He's one of the best scoring guards in the country, and he doesn't rely on the three-pointer to do it. Meanwhile, LSU does. That one, no good. We got a foul on the floor. Take another look at Sharif Cooper. He gets into Gaines' body and skips through there. Yeah, kind of went through, took another dribble, and kind of got away with what would have been a double dribble there, but the officials saying that the ball got deflected, so they didn't call it. But... Alan Flanagan picks up the personal. Here's Watford working on the freshman. Gets his own miss. It's been a weak link for Auburn this season, their post defense, because of their youth, as you mentioned. 0.75 years of experience. Youngest in the country, according to Ken Palm's measurements. Here's Thor. One of the biggest things, Tom, when you're young, too, is your body hasn't developed yet, especially for bigs. They need to work on their legs, work on their core strength so they can move guys around in the post defensively, offensively, on the glass. That stuff comes with time in the weight room. Ooh, big play. Cam Thomas with a chance for a three-point play going over the top of Cooper. They won't be matched up man-to-man -man much tonight, but they were on this possession. Leads the nation in made free throws, top five in free throws attempt. He can use his body. He plays through contact. And his ability to make shots when fouled is one of the best in the nation. Whether it's jump shots like that, you see them do that in every game. Or when he gets downhill and did the lane, if that's a whole different end. He draws almost seven fouls per 40 minutes played. And 90% at the free throw line. Three-point play for Cameron Thomas. And that number two, almost seven. That's 6.7 fouls drawn per 40. It's 25th in the nation. A lot of times, you know, freshmen aren't in those stats as much because a lot of drawing fouls is your intelligence, your instinct, your 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 experience plays into it, but he is just, he, he's very instinctual, he's a very, very smart player, he uses his body really well, takes angles very well, and wants that contact too, you gotta want it. Another block, this one from LeBlanc, LSU with a chance to run up 13. Watford spins into the lane, and a falls home for Trenton Watford. The problem for Auburn right now is you got to be able to, to guard your yard and, and be able to keep the ball contained. And right now, oh, man, Sharif Cooper. Talk about being able to contain the ball. He just went end-to-end, -end, lightning fast, off a of make, too. One of the best teams in the nation running off a of make and then get an and one. Shows you how explosive he is. A little reverse kiss, great control. But on the other end, Auburn's got to be able to guard their yard and keep LSU out of the paint. And right now, whoever's got the ball is able to kind of get downhill and be able to create problems, get them into rotation, and or just score at the rim. Cooper with the and one. You mentioned the transition offense for Auburn after the make. Will Wade was telling us they get 20% of their offense in transition in the first six seconds after an opponent make. The NCAA average is 6%. <laughs> Watford? Another runner in the lane. And a bump in the open floor. Cooper is so hard to stay in front of. It's a first for Hyatt. We mentioned the fouls that Thomas is able to draw. Sharif Cooper leads the country. He draws 7.9 fouls per 40 minutes. ESPN's got him as a number nine rated draft prospect. A's across the board. That looks like Dallin's report card. Oh man, I wish. I had, I, had, I had one A at Columbia University. It was in groups and symmetry. And people are saying, what is that class? Exactly. Yeah. No math or science requirement. Why? Well, well, no math requirement. That's why I went. Science, groups and symmetry, services and knots, Tom. That's impressive stuff right there. I'm lost. Cooper's not. He scored the last seven for Auburn. Watford with a mismatch. Going to spin baseline. Eight now for Trenton Watford. They're doing a great job of playing through him, but again, here comes Cooper the other way. They've got to make Watford feel something on that other end. They've got to dig down, want to try to get the ball out of his hands. He's so comfortable right now. Hyatt tracks down the block shot. And it gets taken away in the lane. Devin Cambridge with it, and then give it right back to LSU. Thomas in traffic. Just let him go, huh? LSU shooting 50% in this game so far. 14 of 28. Here's a top-scoring freshman in the country. 
Another offensive rebound and a putback for LeBlanc, the transfer from Georgetown. Just crush him on the glass. They already have 10 offensive boards. And again, Cam Thomas playing out of a closeout situation. He gets his eyes on the rim. Defender flies out. He blows by him. That's what creates the problem, although he doesn't make it. Defensive rotation, easy offensive board, but back. So Cooper starting to assert himself on the offensive end. After scoring seven in a row, puts up the three offensive board. And so Cooper starting to assert himself on the offensive end. After scoring seven in a row, puts up the three offensive board and no good for Javon Franklin. That's where Cooper's game has to develop, his ability to make threes, especially at the next level. You see how his shot's kind of flat, not much elevation in it, very low release point. He's got to be able to make threes consistently at the next level. That's going to be a big piece. A burst to the rim. He's got nine now. Thomas with the answer from D. 16 first half points for Cam Thomas. It's like watching tennis. I mean, just back and forth, but finally, you know, Cooper takes a breath. And part of that was because they kind of jumped up and tried to bump him right before the inbounds pass to let him know somebody was there. So he had to come back to the ball, stop his momentum. Also, we're in a break zone. I think guys are starting to get tired of playing at this pace. We're in the media timeout under eight. We've gone two minutes past it. This pace has been intense. Speaking of pace, LSU on pace for another high scoring game. They've had 22 halves under Will Wade, where they've scored 50 or more. It'll be 23 likely here in about five and a half minutes. Oops. Cam Thomas with a quick start in this one, as you might expect, Allen. He's hit a couple from deep. He's been outstanding. He's got 16 already in transition. Good throw ahead by Javante Smart. Close out late. Problem, they're up 17. And can I get a Coke? Depends. On what? If we get it at McDonald's. That because Iowa, Minnesota, Christmas Day, LSU, Alabama, when Bama set an SEC record for three, hit the over. And uh, we're on pace to eclipse the 166 that was predicted. I believe we're on pace right now. I've been our researcher, 176 with the paces right now. What's interesting about this, though, too, is this morning that line was at 164. So that going up two points means the money coming in from the Sharps, from the guys with the big wallets, like you, Tom Hart, were piling money on the over, which moved that number up further. So people believe we were going to see quite a game that had some uh, a few shekels in their pocket to spend. Cooper with the travel. Oh, he won't have to worry about that next year. Um, no, you could take two more you, steps and they're fine. You started talking about the number, and that's what caused it to, to climb. You are an influencer, my friend. Uh, nobody has ever mistaken me for that. I don't know if I say thank you or, or I shut say it. You, I, I don't know say what I should Instagram say. Instagram influencer. That would be totally different. Here's you one know what? word. I take it. I'll take that then. Good point. Well done. Double figures now for Watford. Joining Cameron Thomas. They've combined for 26 of LSU's 42. And they've all scored in manners in which they want to score. They're all playing in their comfort zone. Auburn's taken nothing away or made nothing difficult for them in terms of their ability to score. That's the problem. And Watford in particular, he's able to isolate here, spins, help came late and from the wrong side. He likes to go over that left shoulder to his right hand. When you talk about a guy like Cameron Thomas, who's 11th in the country in shot usage, he takes 35% of the shots when he's on the floor. I think most people would look at that and say, well, there aren't enough shots to go around for guys like Watford or Days or Javante Smart. How does it work for LSU? Well, because those guys are the other guys. I mean, they, they also are the other guys taking the most of the shots. There are only four guys averaging double digits. It goes from double digit score down to four points a game. So you have to spread it around a little bit, but not too much. And I feel like guys want to play to their strength, play their role in this team. And you've got Smart and, and uh, Thomas primarily the guys with a ball in their hand to create and look to score for themselves and for the teammates. And when you play with great players, Tom, you know, sometimes you've got to defer to guys that can do that. There's not many guys in LSU outside of him and Thomas can do that. That's why I haven't spoken in 45 seconds. I wanted to defer to the great <laughs> down cuff. Give you your space, man. Javante Smart has hit three threes in this game. Less is more. Heard that. Got to employ it at some point. <laughs> Cooper almost threw that one to Thibodeau. It stays in play. 
Auburn really struggling to fight despite the offensive rebounds. And that'll be on LeBlanc in his first. Devontae Smart, the junior from Red Stick, throwing it in in his hometown. He's got so much range, you got to close out on him. Them off of the offensive glass. I look at this LSU team, we know they can score, but you know what? Defense has been optional all season long. The last few games are sitting in the stance and guarding. If they continue to guard Dallin Cup, this team will be a dangerous out in the SEC tournament. Coach, preach. Nobody wants to see this team if they're guarding, because we know what they can do offensively. And if they're going to get back and they're going to sit in a stance and they're going to play the way they played in this game in particular and that Tennessee game. And Tennessee was a different kind of game plan. They were in gaps. They were allowing Tennessee to shoot contested threes. The Vols did that, could not make them, and they exploited that. So nobody wants to see these guys in the tourney. The latest bracketology has LSU as an eight seed opposite Loyola Chicago. Same bracket as one seed Ohio State. Hmm. I'd buy a ticket to that one. I mean, I love buckets, so I'd, li I'd like to buy a ticket to anything LSU is doing. To be very honest with you, I want to see buckets, so they'll give you that. And Ohio State can really score, too. That would be an outstanding second-round matchup, but one that Chris Holtman would probably be like, we got these guys today? Top five matchup tomorrow, by, uh, by the way, Ohio State and Michigan. Tonight, it's NBA Saturday primetime, presented by AT&T 5G on ABC and the ESPN app. Jimmy Butler and the Heat play their sixth straight road game against LeBron and the Lakers. Our coverage begins with NBA Countdown at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. 20 point how's lead for LeBron, LeBron not going to win? How's LeBron not going to win an MVP this year, you think? If he keeps up this pace, <laughs> are they going to take it to give it to somebody else again? Are we going to do it? <laughs> hey, Nick Saban never wins coach of the year, man. Come on. I I get it, but at some point you got to tip your hat to some excellence. But yeah, we like we like what's new, not what's you know, just unbelievable. Thomas with the shot clock winding down and a shot clock violation. I didn't expect we'd see that in this game. True, that might have been the best defensive possession by Auburn too. And, and you see Cam Thomas do this a lot. He's kind of kicks those legs out trying to draw fouls. We talk about how great he is in drawing fouls using his body, but when he kicks his leg out and initiates the contact, that can be a foul on him. So he does need to be wary of that, but he does it quite a bit. Consensus five-star coming out of Oak Hill Academy. Where he set the Oak Hill scoring record. If you know about the talent they've had at that school, that is impressive. Finally, a three goes for Auburn after they started hot. They'd missed nine in a row. Jamal Johnston. And Auburn needs to make threes. That was good because it went inside and they kicked out for a wide open step in three. But, you know, 33.5% of their offense comes in three point line. You know, that's top 70 in the nation. That's fourth in the SEC. They've got to make threes to be dangerous and score the basketball. Smart works it inside. And Andre High gets rejected. Chance for Auburn to close the gap here. Cooper on the spread out. He's got 11. And we got a quick whistle and an LSU timeout thanks to a 7 0 Auburn run. I think we've seen more runs of 7 0, 10 0, 14 2, whatever in college basketball this year. Than we ever have it seems like you're never out of a game that's an interesting point we have seen that a lot this year and and sometimes i don't know what to attribute that to i mean i would say that when you play at home it doesn't have the same advantage you used to have so right. sometimes you see both teams able to make runs back and forth because the crowd's less in it momentum's less in it that's a huge play he's got a cooper had a chance to squeeze that ball and get out and a run they're down 15. he's team pounding his chest right now saying my bad because this is this final two minutes is really important. If they can get this thing to 10 points or something, as poor as they play defensively, they're right in the game. So you don't want to allow them to get an extra possession, maybe make it 17 or 18 here. Every possession counts here in these final minute 50. I know Seth Greenberg was looking for a stat. Darius Days doesn't miss from point blank range very often. He is second in the country from two at 71%. Seth can use that one a half. <laughs> Like that's a that's a full Alfonso Ellis numbers right there. Yeah, right. That's Fawn's efficiency, baby. Days left with the left leg injury early in this game. Got some uh, medical attention. Came right back on the floor. Auburn in kind of this uh, 
matching, switching, switching man to man they're in right now, trying to keep LSU on the perimeter. They play zone about 15% of the time. Bruce Pearl was was not really fired up about this matchup from a from a matchup standpoint, especially what LSU does defensively. Cooper lost it off of his foot. But Pearl was uh, making the point that what LSU does defensively from a matchup standpoint is something that we haven't seen all season. And with the young team, even more of a concern. Yeah, where they switch everything man to man and kind of keep the ball in front of from LSU standpoint. But they haven't put them in that many screening situations. And they haven't exploited mismatches when they have had them. Um, and Cooper's really struggled to get guys involved. No assists, three turnovers. Remember, he almost averages nine assists a game. Can't leave the basketball, especially when a walking bucket has it. JT Thor with the foul and a chance for it and one. Andre Hyatt. Self-inflicted wounds here. You leave the ball, and it's one on three down there. But Hyatt just stronger, more physical, holding Thor off. Goes up, gets the rebound. Comes down and finishes the sophomore from the Bronx. That's a big basket. Again, you have a chance to finish this half differently. The first and last four minutes of each half are so critical. Now, Auburn won the first four minutes of this game, but LSU won the rest of them until this point. They had a chance to kind of steal this round going into break. They've let that slip through their fingers a bit. Cooper leading the country in assists does not have one in this first half to this point. Williams. Dave's got it, but they end up getting the bucket anyway. Looked like they missed a goaltend. Mm -hmm. I like what they did there, though. They had Cam Thomas on Williams. Williams went and sat on him, tried to post him up. Go at Cam, at Cam Thomas, excuse me. Go at Cam defensively, especially when he's guarding a guy that can go into the post. It's not necessarily what he wants to do. Cooper the other way. Teardrop, no. And in amongst the bigs, Cooper's got a baker's dozen now. LSU needs to make sure to get the last shot here. Go in at worst, up 13. Here's Days. Got it! Big time three for Days for his first bucket. And LSU hangs a half a hundred on Auburn in the first on the floor than Auburn. And after the Tigers made two of the first three threes they struggled the rest of the way from the perimeter LSU plus eight on the glass what'd you make of Sharif Cooper's first half he's got to find ways to get his teammates more involved and they've, they've got to get stops defensively so that he, they can get out and transition and he can kind of run the show but also in the half court here like the this is kind of a one three one into a and then morphs into a man this is a good job by Will Wade honestly out of the break trying to make them think the days there just lost his uh, discipline there and leaned up at Cooper kind of out of control causing a foul there. Hopefully Sharif Cooper is all right after the trip. <laughs> Holding that right knee. Cooper missed the first 11 games of the season for Auburn. And then when he came and showed up, he uh, he came out guns blazing. He wasn't even able to practice with the team for a good chunk of the early part of the season. They'd see him coming on the floor when they were walking off the floor, working with athletic trainers and such. Cooper on the floor again after that pass to the wing. It's off of Auburn, and it will be LSU basketball. It's astounding what Cooper has accomplished in this season as you see him get to the lane and this is so I about getting his guys involved He could have forced a really tough shot. He kicks out to an open three doesn't go down And then pays the other way it does go down But Cooper to your point wasn't able to practice wasn't able to work out wasn't able to be part of team meetings And then just to be dropped in practice a few times and have 26 points eight three eight assists against Alabama That's Alabama too. the team that's run away with the SEC uh, Was quite impressive albeit in a loss his leadership, his intangibles, his commitment to, to the game uh, by yourself is remarkably impressive. LSU doesn't waste much time, do they? This was after a make. One pass, this is, two passes, this, two dribbles. This is on Auburn. Like, match up. Like, you're walking back. you got to lock in, and LSU's coming. They want to play at pace. you got to know who's got who. This is not the way Bruce Pearl want to start the half because a lot of the issues in the first half were just mental mistakes. They've talked about things they want to take away. They want to talk about how to uh, things that have to be done in this game, and you're not going out there and really executing, particularly on the defensive end. 
where you're either getting beat off the bounce, you're in rotation all day long, or at times you're falling asleep on, on knowing the personnel. When Smart's getting into his rhythm dribble, you got to get up into his body, things like that. Here's Jalen Williams. And they'll drag Watford down for the foul. Darius Days has the last nine for the Fighting Tigers. This was 6-7 over 6-1. See a little ball screen, and then Cooper's there, but just jumping back. Like at times, again, know your personnel. You want to get into Days. Days is going to get into his body off the bounce. His teammates are going to have to help. But you just saw him make a three 30 seconds before. Step up into him a little bit. Be ready to contest. Watford now holding his right foot. Looks like a cramp. LSU is without Sharif O'Neal in this game. He's back out with a foot injury. Missed significant time early in the season. See Watford just kind of toe ended hard up, into the ground. Yeah, ended up on point. It's a ballet term, Dallin. It looked like MJ, maybe. He would have stayed upright. <laughs> The dancer, not the with Hooper a glove, that is. Yeah, the dancer, not the Hooper. <laughs> LSU two of two from deep in the second half. The lead is 20. The pace has slowed. Here's Watford. Rebounded by Dylan Cardwell. Devin Cambridge picked up his third foul that last trip down for Auburn. Chance for the Tigers. And it's J.T. Thor with his first bucket of the game. He's got only two after a 24-point contest in Rupp Arena against Kentucky. Part of the problem with young guys is, is finding consistency. And in this game, he hasn't found much of a groove. And partially because Sharif Cooper's not been able to orchestrate as much as he'd like. And they've got to clean up their glass. Again, it's not just the points you're giving up, but your inability to hurt you to run is easily. Although they're running now on makes, they do that well. But you still want to be able to get stops, get that ball off the rim, and get going. Cambridge with the three. On the other end for LSU, 13 offensive rebounds into 11 second-chance points. Thor, good closing speed, blocked Day's attempt. And this is just a, a, a great athlete making a heck of a play because, again, a young team, you're, you're flowing back in a transition. Cardwell should have just bumped, like he could have, should have kept running down the court and taken days before the ball was advanced. He stopped at his guy, and then Thor had to run behind him, but he could make that play because JT Thor is, you know, 6'10", 205 with a 7-foot-plus wingspan. Thomas, first attempt of the half, picks up right where he left off. In 32, which is the most for a freshman in SEC opener since Ben Simmons did it wearing that same uniform for LSU back in 2016. That was against Texas A&M, hit five threes in that game. Cooper, down the paint. Oh, he's good in traffic. It's like sitting in the drive through line of Raising Canes. There's a payoff at the end. Days got another for D. Three threes this half for Darius Days. Over Auburn, Bruce Pearl's team will not be playing in the postseason this year. Self-imposed postseason ban. What impact do you think does that have on coaching the squad over the last five scheduled games of conference play? This is one of the only times I'd say it really benefits having an incredibly inexperienced team, the most inexperienced roster in the country, because all these guys, with the exception of Shreve Cooper, will be back next year. And I think you're trying to play for what, what you hope is a very bright future. They've got a really talented young roster. Whether Shreve goes or not, this team is capable of doing great things, but you want to take every opportunity possible. And these are quality. They've got quality opponents down the stretch here, Auburn, with tournament teams ahead of them. So that they, they can continue to build on what they've done this year and try to improve, um, knowing that next year, maybe they, you know, everything could be different for this team. And they're back in that title conversation, SEC and national. There will be no senior night for Auburn basketball. They don't have any senior players. They don't even have a senior manager. <laughs> the good news is the flower budget will be blown out next year. <laughs> LSU with a comfortable advantage here in the second half. Roses for everybody. between two true Mexican warriors. In league play, have just made over seven a game. And when a team's shooting 67% in the second half, overall for the game, 57 for 
Memphis. He ain't gonna win. Here's Cooper, and he's fouled. I was gonna say, that's really good news in Baton Rouge. You know what's bad news? The crawfish market is out of control. Usually uh -oh. $3 a pound and 90 bucks a sack, but because of the recent cold spell, the bugs have dug deep into the mud. They, they're having a hard time harvesting them. It's going to cost you $120 a sack, crawfish. Not good. Can I, that's that's a bad news. How much? How many are in a sack? How much, What's the weight limit on a sack for $120? Bucks? That's, that's a pretty penny. Well, they're $4 a pound. about 40 pounds a bag maybe you know if you know the guy who's stuff in the bag otherwise I think it's roughly gonna be 30 pounds but if you got friends that bag's gonna be busting let's be real big ups to our, our crew that's the control room that told you how many pounds are in a sack there's no, I'm not gonna let you just skate away like people that you knew it was 40 pounds nope nope but I like how you just went with it though sorry I had to blow up your spot I got I got blown up by a stat guy in Denver is trying to tell me how many how many pounds come out of sack. I, I bad sources. <laughs> Cooper back to the free throw line. This is where he's at his best, getting to the line. Gatorade Player of the Year, five star recruit coming out of McEachern High School outside of Atlanta. That's been a pipeline to the Loveless Village on the Plains. Tonight we've got top-ranked boxing coming your way from Las Vegas. Miguel Burchell defends his WBC junior lightweight title against Oscar Valdez in the 12-round main event. Main card starts at 10 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. And you can catch the prelims starting at 7 Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. Took a while for Sharif Cooper to get going. He's got 19 now. now Auburn shows pressure. LSU solves it. And a foul will put Eric Gaines at the free throw line. Whew. Gaines almost went all Anthony Edwards on folks. You saw that last night. Oh, my goodness. But Gaines was trying to put it on Cardwell's head. Holy cow. Freshman from Bethonia, Georgia. He wasn't that close, but I love his, I love his moxie and aggression to do it, man. Knocks down the first. By the way, Texas blew a 19-point lead. They lose at home to West Virginia moments ago. 84 to 82. Big win for future Hall of Famer Bob Huggins. Wow. That is going to require a uh, flat every, every single game. I was always DVR'd at the Cup household, so that will be viewed as soon as I get home tonight. Watford after the LSU takeaway. Tigers showing a little bit of pressure here with a 19-point lead. Lob off the rim. And stolen right back by Jamal Johnson. Hangs and hits, and he'll go to the line. A little sloppy. Yeah, uh, good hands here by Gaines. Good minutes. He's coming right in, drops it off to Watford. But then a little cookies. Going the other way by Jamal Johnson. Because of the pace of this game and how both these teams play, it's a 17-point game. You know, if you're playing UVA, that's like a 900-point deficit at this point in right. the game. But in this game, this is not insurmountable. You have to start to win segments, though. You start to win four-minute games from each media timeout to get back in this. I like the idea of pressing, but you can't get beat deeps like Gaines just Gaines just beat them the play before. Or like this, you got to find a way to, you want to speed up the game, maybe change the rhythm of the game for LSU, because in the half court, they are on a flow offensively. But you've got to be able to grind away stops, and that ain't going to get it done. LeBlanc, he's got eight. Flanagan, just trading buckets at this point. Here's Cam Thomas. Thomas brings uh, Jamal Johnson his first personal foul. 
Well, LSU aiming for a return to the postseason on the conference a couple years ago. You mentioned the Sweet 16 run under Will Wade. And they're going to have a lot of weapons going into the NCAA tournament this year. Net of 28. Lenardi's got him projected as an eight seed right now. And there's still room to gain a couple spots in the SEC standings. I don't think anybody has time to catch Alabama, but Dallas it's going to be really interesting. I think there's going to be some scheduling shuffling going on in the SEC this week. Texas A&M has missed its last five games. I don't know if they're going to be able to play at Kentucky on Tuesday. Talking with some of the Kentucky folks, they said that they could schedule a non-conference game in that slot, or at least somewhere in the midweek. But uh, but there's a lot of SEC games to be made up in the next two weeks. Yeah, no doubt about it. And I mean, Will Wade said they were they were thinking about playing a non-conference game when their game got canceled this past week. So everybody's open to, to getting more games. And there's a balance this time of year, though, Tom. I would think from coaches to get games in versus trying to get you know three or four games in a seven day stretch you know you got to be careful about how many games you're trying to trying to three three games in a six day stretch and be careful how many games you're trying to put in there whereas also trying to get in more if things are being postponed or canceled for some like auburn to continue to improve your team but for lsu to improve your resume i mean they yeah. have a chance to play arkansas come up here in a couple weeks if that game stays on the schedule we all hope it will of course um they have a chance to improve their resume there to get the sec tournament or any other games added because this team, when they defend LSU, they are way better than an eight seed. They, again, are one of the elite scoring teams in college basketball. So having them as an eight seed is a, will be under seeded unless they're, but their resume right now reflects that of an eight seed. Who'd you play, who'd you beat? But when you look at this team we're looking at right now, and as they go to the SEC tournament, a team significantly better than other eight seeds. SEC tournament in Nashville once again this season, I think that's gonna be wide open Kentucky served notice today by notching their first top 25 win of the season and they beat Tennessee 70 to 55 they hit half of their threes they had four and double figures Keon Brooks went for 10 and 14 Tennessee had the carryover from this LSU game on Saturday they couldn't guard in the first half Kentucky was able to get easy dribble penetration kicks to Davion Mintz he's making threes they're playing again in a rhythm and then Tennessee started to tighten the screws defense in the second half but their issue that's been all year, they just really can't score. And they've been relying more on Jaden Springer and Keon Johnson, two freshmen as of late, to score. And those young men had a really tough day today. And that yeah, they again, combined happens, to go happens with freshmen. six of 25 and one of nine. Mm. Kentucky, as you mentioned, shot the lights out in that one. Uh, Missouri rebounded with three game losing streak. They got Jeremiah Tillman, their big back, and they won handily at South Carolina. LSU tied with Arkansas with four in the loss column. And Arkansas has got a huge one midweek on Wednesday as they take on Alabama. There's Darius Days. He's got another bucket here in the second half. 11 Press. since the intermission from, for Days. So the press has really not been effective here. If I were Bruce Broad, I'd call it off. If you're going to change tempo, maybe go to that 1 3 1 matchup, something to give a different look because in the press right now, all it is is allowing LSU to get in transition even easier. Um, and when they're playing in transition right now, as you see, Auburn has no answer for them. Largest lead of the game for LSU off of Javante Smart three. He has hit four of five from deep. Thousand point score. It'll stay with Auburn. And an easy press break. Gaines gets in the middle of it, drops it off. Smart, wide open, no contest. He's just too good a shooter. That, that's that's going up. He's 44% on the season. And when his feet are set, nobody's around. He's easy, 60% plus free throw, I mean, three point shooter. Here comes a double from the baseline. They feed it inside, extra pass, and it'll be still with Auburn. Five seconds left on the shot clock. When we return, LSU in control. Here we go. Coming up at the top of the hour, Tom in D.C. Hi, KC. Thanks. Great to have you back. A really interesting scenario with Louisville taking on uh, North Carolina to follow us here. Talk with some of the folks close to the Louisville program. Donald, we don't know who's going to be on the floor for them in this game because of COVID protocol. And I'm told that they reached out to North Carolina and they asked for that game to be pushed back to Sunday. 
North Carolina declined. They're playing the game now, even though Louisville would have more personnel available tomorrow. What do you think of that from a competition standpoint? Well, North Carolina did just add the Marquette game, a Mar Marquette game, another non-conference game midweek on Wednesday, about a couple hours ago. They added that Northeastern game this past Wednesday. I think in all honesty, Tom, you know, Carolina right now is on the bubble. They are a, a proud program that every man and woman and child for themselves right now is there, it seems, their approach. We can, we, if you, you said you, you have the, the protocols are in place. You have the allotted people to play the game per the ACC. We're hooping. We're playing this game. And hopefully we beat you. We move on to Marquette. We pat it. We build our resume because Louisville is in the in the tournament right now. Although Marquette so is saying, not. Hey, you got to do what you got to do by your own right. I'm not saying I like it. I just understand it. So you're saying North Carolina is akin to George Costanza running out of a burning building. <laughs> Pushing women, children, clowns to the ground <laughs> and getting out Costanza style. Yes. Eric Very interesting. Klein. Here's Cooper in traffic again and finishing again. 21 for Sharif Cooper. He's got a great ability to hang and hit. If you're going to block his shot. You almost need to jump after he jumps. Let him go because he's going to hang up there and try to double clutch and get into your body. He does it so well. And when guys, shot blockers, kind of leave their feet the same time he does, he, he tends to win that battle a lot. 26 in his debut to tie a school record. Twenty point advantage for LSU press still on for Auburn. Javante Smart will take it across the timeline. Days has been on fire in the second half. No clear out for Smart. Able to find Hyatt. Shot clock in single digits. Cam Thomas fouled on the three. It's a second of Cooper. Yeah, that's a very easy call. Cooper goes into him hard. The ball is already released. He's got to protect the shooter. He's got to be able to come down. We're talking earlier about the fantastic first year scores in LSU history, including obviously Pistol Pete, my favorite stat. Pistol Pete still holds the individual scoring record against eight different schools. And he set the all-time NCAA record against Ole Miss with 13 games to go in the regular season. John Brady, the former LSU head coach, was at that game. Grew up in Mississippi, drove down with a buddy's family, got in the building. He had one of those old flash cameras Coach Brady did, you know, with the, the flashes on top that would rotate through. Well, Pistol Pete, in his bid to pass Big O, missed seven consecutive shots for the go-ahead bucket for the all-time record. He hit the eighth, but by the time that happened, Brady didn't have any flash left. Never got a picture of it. <laughs> That's a dagger. Good plan, though, by, by Brady to get down there. Just uh, didn't anticipate one of the greatest scores of all time going cold. Ah, you don't miss your first seven if you're Pistol Pete, do you? There's a flash as Thomas gets yeah. kicked to the floor. He's tripped. And... Cooper picks up his third. Thomas back to the free throw line. We had a similar one of those in the Cuff family back in. My brother played. My brother Derek played Division Three basketball. He's a really good player. He's going to score his thousandth point. We, nice for Charles Barkley. I I disagree with that. <laughs> Happy birthday to Chuck. Um, we grew up in Pittsburgh. We're driving over to Gettysburg to watch him beat. You know, they're playing. He came played for a school in Maryland. We drive over there. The whole family. All, he's the oldest one of. Five siblings we have. The world packed into the minivan. We get there. He needs three points. To me, five points. Career low. Three. Never Thank seen my know. dad more annoyed <laughs> at that trip. That's that four-hour drive <laughs> there and back. All the crew. And now as a now as a father, you know too. Like that drive. There's nothing enjoyable about that drive with four kids in the car. Grandma, grandpa, mom. There were like what eight was of us. I was on the floor. It's not even legal. What was the Cuff family truckster back then? We're going wood panel station wagon, a Dodge Maxi van. What was the setup? Ah, uh, it was the Dodge uh, Caravan with the wood yep. paneling, I believe, that in this era. 
I think this was like the mid 90s. Can't hide that money. Was, uh, it was the <laughs> it was the company car. Drift drunk, baby. And dad drove, mom and dad drove that thing everywhere. Jamal Johnson with the three. It's a 21 point lead for LSU. It is that that sign was at least at least partially correct. It is Charles Barkley's birthday. So, as you said, happy birthday, Chuck. His uh, his Auburn coach, Sonny Smith, back calling the action today on the Auburn Radio Network. A foul will put Darius Days at the free throw line. Just has been the issue all game. Is they they just been able to get wherever they want, whenever they want, and then they have these outstanding offensive players that finish. Consistent and days isn't necessarily known for for making one foot runners But smart is and Thomas is and days makes threes and he's good on closeout situations Seventeen for Darius days Bill Wade's got a 24 point lead Midweek game they're supposed to travel to Oxford. It would have been their second game in Oxford this season that was postponed due to the winter weather that moved through Mississippi. They couldn't find an airport to fly into. Memphis was a mess. No bus company was there to help them out if they did land. So LSU sent a couple buses from Baton Rouge anticipating that they would get on the plane. Those buses got stuck. Watford will push. The LSU offense has been in high gear and... We got basket interference on LSU. Let's take a look at tonight's Wendy's Wooden Watch. Garza giving Iowa 25 points a game. Baylor's been out of action for a couple, and Iowa Sumu and Illinois absolutely routing Minnesota on the road today. Iowa's one of the best closers in the country, but his services in that regard will not be needed. Clearly, he started pretty strong. Him, Kofi Coburn, one of the best inside-outside combos in the country. Those freshmen are playing better. Jared Butler, you mentioned Baylor still on their paws. I'm just dying to see them play again because they're an incredible team to watch. But also, that's the question right now, Tom, is how are teams going to come off pauses that are on them now? And hopefully, you don't go on it right now because you have trouble. You know, we're up against the conference tournaments and the tournament here. Uh, we're just over three weeks from Selection Sunday, and the last name that was on that list is going to be the winner, folks. I mean, you know, it was a fait accompli when the season began that Luca Garza is going to win your Wendy's Wooden Board. Couple of free throws for Thor. It was a 94-63 final, and that may have sealed Minnesota's postseason fate because they got a bunch of road games coming up, and their last home game, I believe, is Michigan. So the sledding will be tough for a Minnesota team that has not won on the road this season. Jasumu finished with 10 board, uh, pardon me, 19 points, 10 boards, and 9 assists. He was that close Jeez. to messing around. Here's Cooper yeah. rejected by LeBlanc. And LeBlanc wasn't messing around. There was no wasn't messing around. There was no ice cube versus there. And Sharif got to peel himself off the deck. You mentioned, you know, Minnesota. They don't have a road win as we see Sharif go to the 10 again. Great block straight up full of verticality. Um, they don't have a road win. The Big Ten just added them to have a game at Nebraska. Right. Which which may help that Nebraska is the worst team in the Big Ten. Where I'm going with this, it's interesting to see how leagues get involved to assign games to help or help certain teams that need to bolster their resumes in different ways. This goes across leagues from the SEC to the ACC to the Big Ten. How they fill in some of these games will be interesting to watch because obviously you want to give your most teams into the tournament you want to give teams opportunities to replay games that can help them in a certain manner they also have a road game at Penn State if I'm not mistaken another one from Thor and he knocks down both free throws 22 point advantage now for LSU the WCC is in a tough spot in terms of seeding for their postseason tournament Lob and a finish LeBlanc again Silent C, and he's rolling. Georgetown native, uh, Georgetown transfer, I should say, from Baton Rouge. Here's Flanagan now. The um, WCC has turned to Ken Palm for some statistical help when it comes to seeding for the postseason because there's such a great disparity in how many conference games their teams have played. What do you think of that decision? 
I think it's creative, and I kind of like them trying to solve things outside the box and see, you know, and it's not just that the league play is unequal. Obviously, non-conference would you play is unequal, so if we can't sort it out just by our traditional metrics of win-loss, let's take a look at a, a, a deeper dive on who our best team's in because they're also going to limit who can get in the tournament, too. So if you're going to exclude some teams, I'm going to base it on some numbers here right now. Speaking of numbers, LSU just cannot be stopped. Press breaker again, get up to get down LeBlanc. Crawfish! Crawfish yes. for everybody. Free coffee Mondays for members only. Try the smoky dark berry notes of New Explorer Batch or the rich bold taste of New Duncan Midnight. Let's get it. A guy by the name of Corey Alexander, great television analyst, will be on right after us. That's Mo Kill Ties, too. That's, uh, that's an impressive list to be on the top of, DC. I'm surprised Corey Alexander, CA, didn't call our producer, Alex Farmartino, and insist that he's be included in this graphic. That's unbelievable that he's left off because CA will not be I, happy. I but. was told I was told that no gray beards were allowed to be listed. <laughs> he shaved that down now, right? He's, he's, he's crisp and clean again. But I did like the beard. He, he had this sage aura about him beyond his skills on the court that we all know so well. But in all the crazy things Cam has done... Just in his year here at LSU, and the names we've already mentioned him with Pistol Pete and uh, Mahmoud Abdul Aruf, formerly known as Chris Jackson, and others. The fact that he leads that Oak Hill all time list is probably the most shocking. I mean, that is an, uh, they have an unbelievable program with, as you see, Hall of Fame names, and he's broke all their records. He's broke the scoring record there is just wild. Now, full transparency, he was there two years. Yeah, I, most of those guys put in one, one. And, and bounced. By the way, he's got his 12th 25-point game of the season. He's the first SEC player in the last quarter century to score 15 points a game in his first seven career games. And he really hasn't slowed down over the course of this season. Just as good as Cam has been, Sharif, you see kind of a microcosm of his game. Getting in the lane, kind of out of sorts, leaves his feet, doesn't know where his teammate is, which is very abnormal. Turnover. Six turnovers, two assists. Averaging almost nine assists a game and a guy that usually makes the game easier for others has really struggled to do that partially because of uh, how LSU is defended at times, but More importantly, I think he's he's not been the guy we've seen all year to this point Watford right down the lane. He's got 18 LSU's gonna get to the century mark here We talked about pace. that. Yeah, yeah 166 is the over under the highest Number set by Vegas this year, and we are going to shatter that, it seems. Yeah, we will see that in the rear view. I told folks, take the over. I told Stanford Steve right before the game, take the yeah, over. Yeah, he's, I don't know if he did. He's the kind of guy that's always looking for an edge. Here's days to offer the screen, and Thomas, way off the mark. Somebody left the door open. <laughs> Hyatt throws it in. He's got six. Cam Thomas is a guy that Bruce Pearl obviously knew about coming out of Oak Hill. He said, I, I love the guy. Great score. I was talking with Cam after one of his games earlier this season. I said, what is your favorite spot on the floor to score from? Right? D don't you think most mm. shooters especially, but most scores have a, a couple spots that they prefer yep. that they're comfortable at? He looked, he looked right at me and he said, all of them? <laughs> Almost like, why why would I narrow it down to just a couple spots when I could score from anywhere? He's like Russell Crowe in A Beautiful Mind. He's got this limitless approach. To, when he looks out there, he's seeing numbers and things flash around. I saw like a wing jumper and like a, a you know down screen corner three. That's basically like how my world operates. That's why I can hardly add one plus one. But he's out there. Obviously, he's, his scoring ability is limitless. He scores in different ways and in, in different uh, through bodies, off different feet, off angle, off, uh, off balance. He just finds ways to get buckets. He's one of the best scorers in the country. I thought it was really interesting, too, with Will Wade, and I know people have talked about other broadcasts, his, how regimented he is, but that is remarkable. Hour and 15-minute workout, additional to whatever the team is doing every day, no matter what, wakes up the same time, eats the same stuff. He's very regimented. His mom... A military 
uh, was in the military, imparted that upon him. And, man, he's taken that discipline, that drive, that commitment to a whole different level and shortly will be getting paid handsomely for his skill set. Javante Smart, 16 for him. How would you define a, de a def uh, design a defense, easy for me to say, to take Cameron Thomas out? Well, first you have to have guys physically that are capable able, capable to do that. And when I said play through contact, a 6'6", 210, he can overpower and go through a lot of guys. So a team, that's what makes a team like Baylor so good because their guards are grown men and they're able to stay in front of guys, physically meet that challenge, mentally know where you got to be, be connected. As, and it's not just one guy. It's got to be groups of guys because a guy like this, Javante Smart, you have to contain him as well. He can't be able to get in the lane and start to make things happen offensively. Um, so what basically is able to stand the challenge, make sure he you, you close out to him. You can take his contact, take the body from him because he's going to want to get into yours. But you can't let him shoot threes. That's what, that, if he, that's what makes him tough, too. Because he can shoot triples, you have to close out. And then he gets you where he wants you. I can bolo with the foul. Our full day of hoops is highlighted tonight with our Sonic Blockbuster number seven, Virginia, heads to Cameron Indoor to take on Duke. That's coming your way at 8 Eastern right here on ESPN and the ESPN app. Duke with consecutive wins by double digits. Thanks in large part to Matthew Hurt's game recently. It scored 14 straight at one point in that Wake Forest game. Meanwhile, That's Florida a, State, last I checked, they had to barely hold on, which should have been a comfortable win against Pitt. Virginia tied with Florida State in the loss column for the ACC title coming down the stretch. Florida State has struggled a little bit on the road this year. Obviously, last week they um, went to overtime with Wake Forest. I think they're still in progress in that game at Pitt. They're up looks yeah, like you're 10 right. right now with five minutes to go. Um, they're still a team that can find themselves in the Final Four. They're still trying to find their footing, and as Leonard Hamilton told me this week we have to play with the same intensity that we did in that first 20 minutes of the UVA game and you saw it they're one of the best teams in the nation when they play that way when they do that consistently they'll be outstanding similar to how LSU's been today outstanding and dominant and taking you to the over Liberty Mutual customizes wait am I in one of those Liberty Mutual commercials where they stand in front of the Statue of Liberty and talk Tom and Dallin but Kevin, thanks. Here, LSU by 26. And Will Wade has pulled his starters at the under four. Chance for the reserves to get some, That was way too easy. Josh Gray enters and gets a bucket three seconds later. But this, if you, you, Bruce Pearl can still teach his team from this. Like, you have to. You have to compete for the 40 minutes, and these guys have shown willingness to, to cave at times as you see the easy drop off and dunk. When things aren't going well, you have to continue to push through them, and that's part of learning to play through adversity. It won't always be a 30-point beatdown, but if you, yeah. as they go forward in years, you've got to find a way to, man to, to manage situations where you're not playing your best, you're on the road, your best player is down, and he's kind of out of sorts. But that's where you have a really young team, lacks leadership, lacks guys to be able to bring it together and have the boys coming from them not just from Bruce and that's where this team will will learn through maturation as leaders step up I know Sharif is usually the leader on this team, but sometimes a young guy he struggled this game You get in your own head. It's hard to leave when you're worried about yourself So LeBlanc at the free throw line Cooper with a slow start, but a good finish I mentioned the starters have been pulled Cam Thomas will finish this game the nation's leading freshman score with 27 points now leads Division 1 with 12 25-point games this season. It's the third most in a season by an SEC player of the last 25 years. Shout out Devin Downey. He was the last to do it in 2010 for South Carolina. Dan Lange of Vandy had 14 25-point games in the 99-2000 season. And if you had Dan Lange on your bingo card, congratulations. <laughs> you read my mind, my man. Blocking foul will be an and one opportunity for Cooper. 
Rob, I know you'll be there in, in Nashville for the SEC tournament, but I look across the country to see Cooper get the split right down the lane and finish. Refs might have called that a charge, wasn't a 30 point game. Um, I know you'll be in SEC tournament in Nashville. And it's interesting in this tournament in particular because when you look across the country, a lot of leagues have had separation uh, or the Big Ten. I know they've beat each other up all year, but I think there might be a couple teams, you know, that are, that are better than a few others that can find a way to get to the end. The SEC may be the most wide open tournament yeah. in the country. But literally, I mean, I could think of eight different teams to win. I know Alabama separated themselves in the record books. Jeez, oh man, this is becoming like an exhibition. This is becoming like a park game right now. LSU hits a century mark thanks to this lob and finish. Flex on him, son. A blown. Fortunate foul by Cambridge, yeah. Yeah. Could have been a lot worse. Yeah. Josh LeBlanc from Baton Rouge. Think you saw freshman team at Georgetown. Back to the free throw line. You know, you go back to 2008, the SEC tournament in Atlanta where the uh, tornado ripped through the Georgia Dome. Mm -hmm. And I think that this year, given all the inconsistencies and people's uh, routines being disrupted, by the way, the net is off the hook on that basket, and nobody's noticed just yet. Don't fix it. No, well, I'm yeah, starving. Just... There's no need to fix it. We're going to keep this thing going, guys. Keep it rolling. <laughs> oh, somebody might have a ladder in hand. Thor to the free throw line. Uh, Dennis Felton in Georgia won that SEC tournament. They were last in the league. I think they had lost nine of their last 11 coming into that SEC tournament. I think something weird like that could happen this year in Nashville. Auburn won't be there. There'll be one game the opening night. Anybody can beat almost anybody. And um, I think with a lot of conference tournaments, Dallas could be a question of motivation. What is in it for the top seeds? And um, how many teams can play their way into an automatic bid? True. The one hey. the big difference is Jalen Cook hits that later is in 2008, Mike Slide, then the SEC commissioner, was on the selection committee. And he was in Indianapolis during that tournament. And the word from Indianapolis that the SEC had to finish the tournament to earn their AQ that year. Now, that rule has changed. Now, if you don't finish your tournament, the NCAA will award your AQ to the highest seed remaining in the tournament at the point of disruption. And I think that's going to be something to keep in mind once we get to champ week. That's a really good uh, note, to say the least, to let people know that that, that stipulation is now here. Because that, that easily could happen in any conference. We hope it doesn't, especially with the NCAA tournament protocols. That if that happens and some teams are affected, they may not be able to move forward. You have, remember, seven straight days with negative positive tests uh, in Indianapolis to be able to play in that tournament, uh, in the tournament. But just take me back to 2008 real quick. We, you had to finish the tournament? Like, how, I mean, how crazy is that? The NCAA says you have to finish the tournament to have an AQ. If a tornado rips through the tur like, it's that important? Yeah. Come on now. Georgia had two games in one day at Georgia Tech. Uh, that saved Dennis Felton's job for another year. They knocked off Kentucky at noon, came back. I think they beat Mississippi State that night. But, um, you know, no... Nobody had been through anything like that. So why would there need to be a rule in place going in? Now we've all lived a little for better and for worse. That net now stuck after the three from Alan Flanagan. Well, I'm not saying there should be a rule going in, but I think it's incumbent upon the NCAA to say, hey, this is uh, an act of God and a crazy situation. You still get your AQ. SEC, you figure out how you want to do it. Yeah. Not, you got to finish the tournament to have an AQ. That seems a bit over the top. Here's Parker Edwards for three. This into the game and wasting no time getting his shot off. On the other side, we're just chucking him up with LSU on top 102-78. Jalen Cook with the finish. Did love that bench, love that. You can hear him, oh, oh, when he started crossing him up. And it's one of the best things of uh, one of the silver linings of having less folks in the in the arenas is the stuff we get to hear. And a lot of times you're hearing the coaches or the players reacting is a uh, it's an added level of fun and entertainment for a game that's been uh, one sided to say the least. Well, that's why you get paid the big bucks to, to bring the entertainment. They've Franklin to the free throw line. 
we've been trying here. I, we're, we're all we're talking movie references. We're getting Costanza in. We're talking about all types of other stuff. We went crawfish, into the crawfish bag. Not right the sack. I mean, come on. We've been invited to at least one boil. Franklin's got another free throw. They're looking at the net. Owen Short is like, okay. we get this play? Yeah, he's a ref. <laughs> no, top no, 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 no. Screen. Owen, we're good. I got flights too. Like, we got to get out of here. The <laughs> roll. You know the best way to make a late afternoon flight out of Baton Rouge? Enlist the help of Officer A Bear and his uh, motorcycle. He got me there real quick a couple of years ago. Veteran move right there. Bradley Agamo into the game now for LSU. And you know, with a name like A Bear, he knew a few folks in town. Uh huh. So we were going to be fine. Now I have an image of you just on the back of his, mo uh, back of his motorcycle. <laughs> Is that what we're talking with, about? Is that with you with your back strapped to your back? <laughs> with goggles and a backpack and my carry on luggage in my lap. Yep. Beautiful. Love it. Resourceful, folks. It was a, it was very dumb and dumberish. <laughs> he totally redeemed himself. <laughs> Here's Josh Gray. 6'11 freshman. What does what this game do? Does it change how you view LSU's postseason possibilities? It's a great question because last week started to open my eyes and say, okay, you, you, you really controlled the game against Tennessee. And then it's like, how do you, do you, how do you validate that? And they didn't get to play midweek. They show up today with an Auburn team. It's not an ideal miss, a matchup for them. They, Auburn offensive rebounds. They're great in transition. Two of the LSU's biggest weaknesses. But they took care of those in flying colors. They dominated on the glass. They got back in transition because offensively they were so good. They scored again over 50% of their shots. So they allowed them to set their defense. So if this trend continues as these guys move forward, I mean, like I said, they, they are not playing like an eight seed now. And they have a chance to move up. Georgia, Arkansas, Vanderbilt finish the season. Arkansas will be a resume building win. But LSU is serving notice to the country. They're one, one of the best offensive teams, but they may become one of the better teams. They flew by the over.